gorgeous film. So we'll just start. Oh, thanks, Gemma. Um, so we do have a lot of filmmaker readers, and I just said I'd ask, how did you get into film? Oh yeah, okay, well that's, okay, that's a long story. Okay, so what happened was, uh, I came back from living and working in London, doing kind of, I won't say dead-end jobs, but just uh, regular jobs, paying the bills. And I came back with aspirations to change my life. I was 26 years of age and I wanted to do something that was creative. I had no real idea what that was going to be. I looked at the, uh, I thought maybe it'd be something in theatre, behind stage and so on. And it just coincided with my housemate dating a girl that was in the film, first year in film out in Dunleary and she kind of moved in with us and then I started to help her on her films and she was this wonderful charismatic young lady from Norway who was making really interesting stuff and had wonderful exciting ideas and that kind of started to just inspire me and in, in many respects Kristen was a big catalyst for that and she probably doesn't think it but <laughs> so you got free film school, essentially. Uh, well, no, <laughs> then I, no, G yeah. helped me put together a portfolio rather quickly and I got into film school. So I went to, to film school for four years out in Dunleary when I was 26, graduated when I was 30. I, up until about last year, I was still saying I was a recent graduate <laughs> of film school. <laughs> but I suppose I can't do that anymore. Oh, no. I'm in my 40s now. Anyway, but, I digress. Uh, <laughs> Like, okay, so you've done a lot of um, non-fiction, so you've done a lot of doc and you've done drama as well. A lot of it is about storytelling. Now Wait, I have to tell you a story. One time when I was doing a documentary, I was in the throes of an argument with my producer, Andrew Freeman, and he did pull me up and said, Ken, we're making a documentary here, not a drama, which I thought was rather good. <laughs> <laughs> as I was screaming. <laughs> but just what do you feel are the similarities or differences or even which would you prefer as an artist in some ways? Oh, look, I don't think it's a question of which do you prefer. I mean, what I feel comfortable with, what I enjoy doing is documentaries. I mean, that's not to say that someday along the line I won't veer into drama. And I know I did. I did a short. I mean, uh, but um, for the time being, I'm enjoying documentary making very much so. I am really intrigued about trying to, to create films in um oh gosh i don't know how to put this it's like i'm driven to make films that i'm comfortable making and within in within something that i feel that i'm capable of like i'm never going to be capable of creating you know uh conjuring two <laughs> for example because it was mentioned earlier um you know and there's no point i, I want to make films within what i think i'm capable of delivering good quality stories in original, captivating ways. And at the moment, I feel, I don't know what audiences will think, but I feel that's what I'm doing, or that's what I aspire to do anyway. So who knows, maybe one day I'll, I'll, I'll work out, um, I'll work out how to do it in the drama. Absolutely. So with documentary making, you know, I, you can take a few breaths and I need them. I need to kind of just sit back, see what's there, work it out. And, and the same when you're dealing with, because a lot of the films or the, the films I've made, the two uh, feature docs that I made, it is about building relationships and taking moments with people and making sure that you, um, you can get everything to translate in a particular way. And with this this film that's coming up now, which is incredible, it's so different the the cultural standpoint of America and in it being over in America to his and hers. Um, what made you go across the pond for that? Well, I wanted to be a bit braver. I wanted to take myself out of my comfort zone. I thought that, you know, obviously America is uh, quite alien to me. I know it from the movies and I know it from a few visits, but uh, it's always interested me. I, I think I wasn't sure I'd end up in Oklahoma. That was happened by chance because we found our radio show host uh, there. And then we discovered elements about Oklahoma that just really tied in well with our aspirations for the film, such as it being voted the manly estate and, uh, and so on. So really, it was by chance that we ended up in Oklahoma, which I think is very different to wanting to make a film in America, because I could have been in North Carolina, I could have been in in California. You know, there's so many different, uh, that it's so different from one state to the next. 
And when we got over to Oklahoma, I was wary, I was worried that is this going to translate? Am I going to make something, am I going to be able to make something universal, which I wanted to do because the mother-son relationship is so universal and I would hate for it to be, uh, uh, to feel uh, uh, thwarted by the fact that I'd set it in an unusual place. The reality of it is, of course, Oklahoma could be sensationalized and it's full of you know, quite alternative thinking to what we consider, uh, you know, in, in our little world. Having said that, that relationship remained constant. It was very similar to what you'd expect to find anywhere. And uh, I enjoyed it. I, you know, I enjoyed, what would you say, extracting, finding, exploring the humour, the, the animosity, the uh, poignancy within the relationships. And it would have been no different if I was here, I think. How did you find these gorgeous characters and then build a rapport with them? We found them all via random searching on the internet, but also a lot of it was done by just calling bars and barbers. So for example, the barber, we literally called his barber to talk, that barbershop to talk to people in the barbershop. And he said, well, listen, I have an interesting relationship with my own mom, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we introduced ourselves that way. Then we did Skype calls when it went on to the next phase. So I only ever got to Skype with them. And I, that was, and the next time they would have met me, I was arriving at the door random Irish man with two random Irish crew and uh, that's how it all kind of started. And building that rapport because there's so many honest moments and it like it feels like you're having a chat with someone you've known all your life that's that's how it comes across and I'm just wondering how do you get that the secret? Well there's no secret to it I mean it's it's a case of um, putting it I do put it all out at the beginning I say what this film is about and where we're going and if I get a hint that there's a certain angle, I will say, well, look, that sounds interesting. Don't, I'm not going to rule that out. Would you be comfortable with that? So we go through all the different elements that could uh, turn up and we get to know each other. And, you know, I speak about my own experiences as well. And I think, um, I think there's a level of trust that you have to have. I mean, that goes without saying really, isn't it? When someone invites you into their house, even without a camera, you're trusting them that they're going to be respectful and and uh, appreciative of your world. So that's, and I, and I hope also a big part of that is introducing them to my previous work. And so that they, and nowadays you can go online, you can do your researches. I'm sure everybody Googled these, this guy who's coming out or whatever. So they can see what's, what's out in, in the greater world and what's being said about your films and your sensibilities and so forth. That, yeah, that it's not like a Jersey Shore type thing that you're making it all about drama, it's about truth. Yes, yes, thing. yes. This is, this is one of the, the, the main things that I I just thought was gorgeous about this is that it's so universal and it translates so well and everything just feels like this beautiful organic shape to it and how do you get that in the edit and have that like you've so many stories in there how do you get a flow to that oh that was difficult it's not easy uh, it took a long time uh, it took a lot of late nights and uh, unfortunately I I went down the wrong path with a few of my edits so I, I said this earlier i think what we ended up with was what i kind of thought the film would be apart from one kind of editorial device that i used in it but outside of that is really what i planned i did plan to move sequentially through characters and that's why i used the device of the radio show because it would afford that you don't in general have radio shows like this that don't move on to the next character it's literally the next call you know it's rare that you'd have them crisscrossing so i thought it would it would suit this structure and um yeah it, the edit was big big challenge and uh, maybe the better film is the better for it you know if it all ran too easily maybe i would have locked it too soon i did get outside help i asked fellow edi fellow editors i'm suggesting i'm an editor there mm -hmm. i'm not i asked fellow uh, uh, fellow filmmakers and editors to uh, to help you know i gave them a look at the film and lots of people had lots of opinions that really did help and and it encouraged me and i did get through it and uh, now i'm really kind of proud of the structure i think it it sits well i think it's going not for everybody obviously but uh, i think i'm i'm proud of uh, reaching an end.